Life became easier after modern technology and different modes of transport came into play. But in earlier times, life wasn't this easy, especially in places like Alaska, where people had to depend on sled dogs for their every need. Let's also remember that Alaska experiences extremely cold temperatures, with the mercury dipping as low as minus 62.2 degrees Celsius. According to Wikipedia, about 9,000 years ago, sled dogs were introduced in the Arctic, and they quickly became an important mode of transport for people who lived there at that time. It was only in the 20th century that semi-trailer trucks, snowmobiles, and airplanes were introduced to help haul supplies in areas that were otherwise unreachable by other methods. Back then, sled dogs were used to bring in supplies to Alaskan towns and deliver mail to rural communities. And while they're still used as a mode of transport by some locals, they're no longer the only mode of transport for people who live there. But can sled dogs bear the bitter cold Alaskan weather? Yes! Siberian huskies are bred to be tough and can withstand temperatures as cold as minus 51 degrees Celsius. However, they should be allowed to spend as much time indoors as they spend outdoors. After all, they need warmth too. This is the story of an Alaskan scrub dog called Balto, who was usually seen roaming alone in the bitterly cold streets of a small town in Alaska called Nome. He had no friends and was often overlooked when mushers positioned their dogs to lead specific teams. But in 1925, tragedy hit Nome. People required a miracle to save them from certain death. In January 1925, physicians declared that some townspeople had developed symptoms of diphtheria and that the only way to survive was to get an antitoxin to help fight the disease that claimed the lives of 15,000 people in the U.S. in 1921. The problem was that the antitoxin was located 674 miles away in Anchorage, a journey that, today, would take about one and a half hours by flight. But let's remember that back in 1921, there were no flights, and people had to depend on sled dogs to lead the way and bring them back home safely. The journey that started on January 27, 1925, was divided into multiple stretches to bring back the antitoxin and was termed the Great Race of Mercy. There was one catch, though. According to Dr. Curtis Welsh, due to the extreme weather condition, the serum had to reach Nome in six days, after which it would be ineffective. A group of 20 mushers began their journey, starting with Wild Bill Shannon powering through the minus 46 degree temperatures with his sled dogs to pick up the 9.1 kg serum from Ninana. Shannon lost four of his dogs and parts of his face had succumbed to frostbite before handing over the serum to another team led by Leonard Seppala and his 12-year-old sled dog Togo. Seppala's team journeyed over 91 miles in minus 62 degree temperatures and handed over the serum to Charlie Olson who passed it to Gunnar Kassen to complete the remaining journey of 53 miles to Nome. Kassen chose Balto to lead his team home. Balto, the scrub dog, who was often overlooked when mushers positioned their dogs, became a hero for the people of Nome. Balto led the team through an extremely nasty blizzard and didn't steer off course even when his team couldn't see clearly through the storm. It took the 20 mushers five and a half days, or 127 and a half hours, to return home with the life-saving serum. Thanks to Balto and his determination to lead his team home, the life-saving serum was handed over to Dr. Curtis Welsh on February 2nd at 3 a.m. Eight years later, on March 14, 1933, Balto passed away at the age of 14 and his statue was mounted in the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Do you know any other hero dogs that should be featured in our videos? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and check out JoJo Stories for more jaw-dropping content we're sure you'll enjoy.